Hello everyone and welcome to WASP 101. I'm Andrea Rossi, the developer of WASP. Before starting with uh, the next tutorial, I just wanted to let you know that you can now support me for the development of WASP uh, using Patreon. You can actually go at the link uh, patreon.com slash toolkit and you can actually help me support WASP as well as get some rewards such as uh, recognitions, you can get uh, some WASP stickers as well as in the higher tiers you can get more personalized help and support for your project if you're helping. So if you are interested in WASP and if you want to see WASP growing please consider supporting me and uh, WASP by subscribing to the Patreon page. Thank you. In this tutorial, uh, which comes after a pretty long break in the tutorials, I'm, I'm sorry about that, uh, we are going to look at one of the features that appeared in some of the betas and that is now included in the stable version of WASP, which has never been really properly documented. And this feature is uh, the part catalog. So what a part catalog is, is a component that allows you to clearly specify uh, how many parts of each type you might want to have in a specific aggregation. It allows you to do it uh, both with fixed numbers as well as with proportions and it has a few uh, little uh, specific uh, tricks and, uh, and controls that I'm going to try to explain you quickly in this video. Uh, for, sure, for the specific of this video I decided to reuse a tutorial that I've been giving at um, Digital Futures a few months back. And if you go on and look at the link in the description box you'll be able to download um, three files and one of them is the Rhino file that you can see open here as well as you if you go on and open the Grasshopper work file you'll have the, a simplified definition of what I showed in Digital Futures. Uh, fundamentally what we have here is um, we have uh, an aggregation uh, which is made of three uh, different parts sorry two different parts the yellow part which is called um, block 2 and the green part which is called block 1 and these parts are a little bit more complex because they have an attribute and they have some supports and you can go on and look uh, at the other videos uh, which I'm going to try to link also above um, where you can see how to use these different features but for the specific of this tutorial all we are interested in is that we have an aggregation and in this case here we have a stochastic aggregation where we can uh, every time we reset we get a different result but where at the moment we just have control over the total number of parts but we do not have control over how many parts of each type are there. Now this is where the part catalog comes into play. If we go under the in the WASP menu under the parts tab you can go at the very end and bring in the WASP part catalog component. Now what this component uh, is asking you is, is fundamentally asking you just for the first two inputs which are the ones that are really required and so the first input that it's asking for is which parts are in this aggregation and so of course what we're gonna do is we're just gonna go and get this merge component here where we have our parts and we're just gonna connect it to parts now that we provided uh, the parts list what we have to do is we have to provide a list of numbers one number for each part type that it's gonna tell us how many parts uh, from each type we want in our aggregation. So to keep a bit of order we're gonna maybe create a, a merge component just that we know the order of things and we're gonna go and create for example a slider saying that I want 12 parts of type A and for example I'm gonna say I want 25 of type B can delete the third input and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go and plug this one into the number input and you see that what you get as a catalog as an output is a, our cat part catalog object that says that we want 12 parts of block type block 1 and 25 parts of type block 2 so now that we set this we can just go on take our catalog and plug it into the newly added catalog input of our stochastic aggregation And we can go on and reset our aggregation. And you'll see that we get an aggregation which does not have the exact number of parts that we specified. Could reset again, this looks a bit bad. But if we go and check, we're going to have now 29 parts of type A 
and 91 parts of type B. Now, the proportions are not exactly perfect, and the reason for that is that um, in the probabilities of how these parts happen does not come into play just their part catalog itself, but also the amount of rules that allow to place types parts of one type versus parts of another type. If we want to fix exactly this number of parts, so we want to say I want exactly 12 parts and exactly 25 parts, we can actually go and use the next input, which is allowing us to say if the catalog is limited or if the catalog is proportional. What it means? It means that if the catalog is limited, once 12 parts of type A and 25 parts of type B have been placed, the aggregation will be stopped. No matter how many parts we specify in the uh, number slider here, the aggregation will stop because the catalog is empty. Uh, if we set limited to false, which is the default which we're having now, instead this number ask, act exclusively as proportion. So they act as a probability of part A versus part B being placed. Now let's go on and create a boolean toggle. Double click and set it to true and plug it into limited. If now I go and reset, you see what's happening. The aggregation turns orange and the reason for that is that we told the aggregation to create 120 parts, but we gave it a catalog which is limited, which has just 37 parts. So what the, what the part catalog is doing right now is, is exactly creating 12 parts of type A and 25 parts of type B. And once it reaches the number, it's just going to stop and not add anything anymore. If we go on and change this to false, and we're going to reset again, this time the aggregation will again grow larger, and we'll try to use these numbers as proportions between parts of type A and parts of type B. As I said, these proportions don't work perfectly, and the reason for that is that there are other probabilities at play. What you can also do in uh, this file is you can also try and add another boolean toggle and use the last input. And when you see that, for example, your aggregation, like in this case, I, I said that the proportion should be 1 to 2, but what I'm getting here is more 1 to 3, 1 to 4. So what you can try to do is, this is a little bit something still experimental, but what you can try to do is you can try to use the last input, which says whether the catalog is adaptive or not. So what does it mean? Uh, what a, an adaptive catalog is a catalog that changes its probability based on the number of parts which have already been placed in the aggregation. So by default, this is set to false, which means that the catalog is not adaptive. So that means that, that every time it needs to add a new part, it's going to add part A or part B using these probabilities. If we set adaptive to true, it's going to take a second. Uh, but if we're setting adaptive to true, what's going to happen is that the aggregation will check how many parts have been already added, and then it's going to say, okay, I've already added a lot of parts type of part A, and so the proportions are off, so it's going to lower the probability of part A in order to try to match the right number, the proportions of part A and part B. So it's something I'm still working on, and it's not 100% functional, but it's something you can try with to experiment with if you see that the aggregation is not actually responding to uh, what you wanted. So if I, for example, go and reset now, we can go and check. And we can see that it's still not perfect, but the parts are adjusting a little bit better. So we have 40 and 81. It's actually pretty good. So it's actually one to two, as you can see. So this adaptive input is quite useful whenever you have uh, relatively complex aggregations where the probability of parts being placed are not well distributed. Meaning uh, if there's a much higher probability of placing one part type rather than another one, for example, because there are many more rules that place that part. So using the adaptive input might help you to have a part catalog that is uh, more effective. Now, of course, this part catalog doesn't work whenever we set this to uh, to limited. So that's just not going to do anything, as you can see. 
But so you can see that you can experiment with this in a variety of ways and you can create, um, you can increase highly the control you have on your aggregation and on your files. Of course, you can use the part catalog for a stochastic aggregation, but you can as well use it for a field-driven aggregation. If we go on and we hide everything we have up here in this file and turn the preview off, and we come down here and activate this part of the script that is deactivated using enable. It's gonna take a second. You see that we have a second aggregation, which this time is an aggregation that tries to follow uh, this uh, input curve that we gave. So we're trying to place those parts along that curve. Now I'm gonna hide the filled stuff here because we don't need it. And let's just try to do exactly the same that we've done before. So we come where our field aggregation is, we go under parts and we bring in a parts catalog. We have to connect our parts from our merge up here. We can go on and again create our um, part amounts. So for example, I'm gonna create a merge component once again. And I'm gonna say that I want 25 of part A and I don't know, 45 of part B. Oh, let's make it the other way around, maybe, just to try. And I'll connect this to num. Uh, I'm gonna set limited, uh, for example, right now with that we we'll create a toggles, leave it to false, as well as adaptive set to false. And I'm gonna connect my catalog to the catalog input of my field aggregation. If we now go and reset, we'll see that we get aggregation where we effectively now part, the part of type A is dominant, so we see way more of them. But we can of course go and check and see that the proportions are quite off. And the reason for that is that uh, using a field introduces yet another level of control over the probability of the parts to be placed. And hence the effect of the catalog becomes often even less uh, visible. So it becomes really difficult. So it's gonna work as a proportion, but not as the exact proportions that you're setting. So if you wanna adapt this one and make it work better, we have once again, two options. Option one is to set the catalog, uh, the limited input to true. And so in this case, we're kind of blocking the exact number of parts we want. And so once again, we know that we are not gonna grow this total number, but just the total that we specify here. And then we can actually use this one to exactly control how many parts we have. Or the second option is if we wanna instead have control from the slider up here, we can go and turn limited to false, and we can turn adaptive to true. Now, once again, particularly on the field aggregation, adaptive the adaptive input seems to still work a bit weirdly, and I'm trying to figure out a better way to do it. But you can still try, and you see that still we get uh, a result that has a better distribution. So we had kind of a one to two proportion here, and we effectively have something close to the one to two proportion. So you see how by using this part catalog, um, we can very quickly uh, have a much higher level of control over our aggreg aggregation and also make sure that we control in different steps how many parts get added and how we can use that both for controlling stochastic aggregation and field driven aggregation. Now, I hope that the tutorial was clear and I hope that using the part catalog will help you increase the control you have on your aggregations. If there's any question, please comment below or join the Discord chat. And if you want and can, please support WASP on Patreon and I'll see you in the next tutorial. Thanks a lot and bye.